Hey everybody and welcome back to another Top 5. On today's episode, I'm talking about top 5 things that we do when we first set up at a campsite. Number 1 is we always fill our fresh water tank, even if we have full hookups. And the reason for this is because you never know if there's going to be some type of issue throughout your stay, whether that be freezing water lines at the campground, maybe maintenance being done at the campground, or some type of busted water line. So to play it safe, we fill up our fresh water tank. This way, if something were to happen during our stay, we know that we can go five, seven days on our fresh water tank uh, while the repair is being made to the campground. Number two, we always protect everything going into the RV. So for the water, that's a water filter and water regulator. We even take it one step further and we also have a water softener. And that's more for comfort than protection. But those three things combined make for a very enjoyable shower. And it also protects the plumbing as far as getting debris into the water lines. That's what that filter is going to do. And then the water regulator is going to limit the pressure going into your RV to about 55 PSI, and that's what our RV is rated for. So this is going to prevent us from busting any lines. It's actually really important. Everybody should be using a water regulator when they connect to a campground. The water pressure coming out of campgrounds uh, is typically unregulated, and I don't even know what it can be, but I know there's been times that I've turned on the water and it is a very high pressure. And if we were to hook straight up to it, we would for sure burst some lines. Another quick tip is to always turn the water on at the campsite and let it run for a few seconds. You'd be surprised how often I have done this and the water will actually come out brown for the first three, four, five seconds uh, and then starts to clear up. The other way that you want to protect what's going into your RV is for the power. So we use a surge protector. It's a pretty simple surge protector. There's several kinds out there and they're very fancy, they're very simple. I would say that ours falls somewhere in between, between simple and kind of a, like a mild range. Um, the advantage of what we have of our surge protector is that it will test the polarity of the power coming out of the box. So you just want to make sure that, that polarity is correct. The other thing it's going to do is if there is a surge of power, the surge protector will take the hit of that. Sometimes it will destroy your surge protector, but it's better to replace that surge protector than say an AC unit or a microwave. You know, for 50 to a hundred dollars, the surge protector is much cheaper than those high, high cost appliances. Uh, number three, is one that is controversial because I did a short about this and people didn't believe me, but I always leave a door, a window, or a vent open when running my slides in and out. And the purpose for this is, especially on our RV where we have a full wall slide, when you bring that slide in or out, it's trying to move air inside the RV. If everything is closed up, there's really very little space for that air to go. I'm sure, it's all go through you know, little cracks and stuff like that in the RV because no RV is like airtight, no vehicle is airtight. But you can really tell the difference when I open a vent, which is the best way for me to show you this. If I open the vent and bring our slide in or out, you can see the air move through the vent because it spins our fan inside that RV. So you can actually physically see the air moving in and out. And that's just something I like to do. The reason I do this is because I feel over time, it is going to extend the life of our slide motors. If everything's closed up and the slide is trying to move in or out and it's trying to push all that air and there's nowhere for that air to go, it's causing extra resistance on those slide motors. So it's just a little tip. You don't have to believe me. You don't even have to do it if you don't want to. It's just something I do. I think it's a good idea. Again, it doesn't matter what it is, a window, a vent, or a door, leave one of them open while bringing your slide in and out. When making all your connections to your RV, be absolutely positively sure that your sewer connection is <laughs> secure. Because if not, it's going to cause 
quite the issue. I know the very first time Sabrina and I went RV and we rented an RV, we took it out, we had watched the RV geeks and they told us how important that connection was and we believed them. And we thought that we had that connection secure and it was not. When you open up your tanks, there is an incredible amount of pressure that runs through uh, this hose. And I did not have it connected very well. And I caused what I would call a pucano. It was a disaster. It's very similar to the movie with Robin Williams uh, when he takes his RV out and he causes a very similar issue. I'm telling you, this shot straight up in the air because the valve came off, flipped upside down, and shot straight up in the air. The odor was horrible. Luckily, the wind took it away from me and not towards me, and we didn't have a neighbor at the time. It's very embarrassing. It's really just a terrible experience all around. Just be sure that that sewer hose is connected. Either thread it or you got rocks on top of it or some type of saddle bag on top of it, some way to make sure that connection is secure. It's one of the most important things that you can do is be sure that's secure. Sometimes in a pinch, I'll have Sabrina stand on it when I pull the valve. If, it, if we don't have rocks, we don't have threading or any other way to secure that, I'll have Sabrina just put her foot on top of it just to be sure that's not going anywhere. Uh, the fifth one is actually something that we do when we leave the campground, and that is we always turn off our water. We turn off our water pump, and we make sure that the water at the spigot is off. And that's just because if you were to have some type of plumbing issue inside your RV happen while you're away, disastrous. Water is like, you know, the RV's worst enemy. And if you had some type of plumbing or, you know, fixture faucet or something that where you can't even see and it was leaking and you were gone like three, four hours, you could have met major, major water damage. So just a, you know, a helpful tip. Every time you leave the campground, just turn off your main water supply into the RV and make sure that your water pump is off as well. Well, there are five tips for today. If you enjoyed it and you liked the video and you found these tips helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. That's okay too. If you have some tips, I know we have more tips than this, but we're trying to limit them to five. But if you have tips and you want to share your tips with people, leave those tips down in the comment section. These tips uh, may not only just help Sabrina and I, but they'll also help anybody watching the video. So that's it, everybody. Take care. Safe travels. And I will catch you next time.